All right, yeah, here are our pre-college interns, and uh, they are ready to begin. In fact, you've got a slide here on fun facts for the Kennedy Space Center. Did uh, you want to begin with that? Yeah. Because you did a really good job of putting these together. Okay, let's check out the slide of your uh, fun facts here. Okay, um, some fun facts about Kennedy Space Center is uh, Kennedy Space Center started out as a ballistic missile range, and it converted to a launch operations facility July 1st, 1962. Um, the center is also home to all manned launch operations, and its total area is 570 square kilometers. Some cooler things about Kennedy Space Center is it's located on the Merida Merid Island National Wildlife Refuge, which was mentioned earlier, and we also have the fourth largest building in the world by volume, and that's the Vehicle Assembly Building. All right, great. So, uh... I guess, Ida, are you going to be up first? Yes. All Hi, right. I'm Ida Cortez, and I work with the IT Boeing Integrated Site Support Team, assisting end users with computer problem resolution. We follow an IT industry standard metric regarding computer-to-head count ratios. Our goal is to re reduce the ratio of 1.4 to 1.19 at the Kennedy Space Center. The, can, the current ratio represents an excess of over 500 machines that includes tablets, CPUs, monitors, docking stations, and laptops. Change in, pub, in um, budget proposals and planned workforce reduction causes the increase of computers without users. Our duty is to organize and recover these computers to be issued to another user or transferred to nonprofit organizations. Katie Gandolfi works for IHA, which is Innovative Health Applications, where her office consists of over 100,000 acres. Katie participates in different forms of ongoing ecological science. Katie studies and monitors the population of juvenile scrub jays, which is a rare bird species found on Merritt Island in the Kennedy Space Center, and surveys the scrub vegetation and regrowth where these birds established a home. She also studies sea turtles and fish community populations, such as the red drum. However, the most challenging ecological species that Katie studies is the wild alligator, which includes tagging and tracking growth and movement. Sean is an intern working in the space station processing facility. His mentor is Linda Crawford, and she is part of the Constellation project. Sean works with the launch control system faculty. They are responsible for writing the program that the control uses for launches. Within LSC, there are applications and displays. Sean is on the same team who builds the display services and frameworks. DSF is the software that is displayed on the computer in the control room. Sean's project is to create a video tutorial on how to use the display services and frameworks integrated development environment software for launch control systems using TechSmith Camtasia Studio software. This tutorial will be used to help future interns learn how to use the software's user guide. Hector Pacheco is a NASA intern working for the Johnson Space Center International <coughs> Space Station resident office located at Kennedy Space Center, also known as JSC ISS. Hector serves as the technical liaison to JSC and provides ISS hardware as built configuration verification and other documentation to JSC. The project he is working on is the conversion of a multi-purpose logistics module, MPLM, into a permanent multi-purpose module, PMM. The MPLM is a reusable logistics carrier that flies in the space shuttle payload bay and has been the primary system used to deliver and return hardware from the orb on-orbit ISS. The MPLMs are one of Italy's major contributions to the ISS program. This project is based on modifying the MPLM Leonardo because the MPLMs were not originally designed to stay in space for more than two weeks at a time. NASA determined that an MPLM could be converted into a PMM to increase the capabilities of the ISS. With the modification enhancements, the MPLM Leonardo will now become a PMM and will be left on orbit for the duration of the life of the ISS. Karishma is working as a Dynamac intern in the Space Life Sciences Lab. Her project, MERGE, is a NASA flight research experiment to investigate the microgravity effects associated with cell-cell communication and beneficial microbe-host interactions using a fungal plant model system. P. indica spores will be used to inoculate Arabidopsis 
seeds germinated on a clinostat in order to determine if simulated microgravity affects the interaction between the fungus and its plant host. And I am Amber Porter, and I'm working as an intern in the Fluids Testing and Technology Branch, and it's located in the ONC, which is Operations and Checkout. Um, most of my time, I'm in the cryogenics test lab, and my project consists of working on the Cryostat 300, which is a device that uses a vacuum and gaseous or liquid nitrogen uh, to test various multi-layer insulation systems. Um, the purpose of this project is to determine the pumping performances of various multi-layer insulation systems and to allow for standard processes to be developed. All right, thanks. And uh, that is the uh, conclusion of the presentation. And uh, we'd certainly like to take questions for our pre-college interns. Uh, we can begin with Langley. For Krishma, um, can you explain what um, what your what your uh, project is on with the microgravity and the plants? Um, sure. So uh, the, the main point is we're gonna plant seeds onto a plate, and then once we have those seeds onto a plate, we will draw. Like each seed will have a drop on it, and once we have that plate done, um, the, the, the plates will spin in a circle for about two weeks. And what's that, what, what that's supposed to do is the plants can't tell which way is up and which way is down. So it's basically going to be like they're in space. So. OK. Any other questions from Langley, Karen? No other questions from Langley. All right, uh, any questions from Marshall? Yes, we had some here, and we're going to bring our students up. But I have a quick one for the person working in the cryogenics lab. You know, sometimes I myself connect with middle school students, and I get asked the question, do people there cry a lot? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, seriously, we'll bring up our, our real questions. This is for uh, Sean. He was working on the, um, the launching program. Could you describe your project again? My project is to make a tutorial for our user guide for future interns so that when they're um, learning how to use the NetBeans software, that's the program that they use to write the, the computer language and we use Java. JavaScript, um, that's the language we're using to write our programs. And my job is to make a um, video using Contagious Studio to help enters and learn how to use um, the software. OK, thank you. And this person is, uh, or this question is for the last person in cryogenics. And um, I wanted to know, what sorts of materials do you typically test uh, for uh, thermal insulation, you said multi-layered insulation. Um, we test uh, something called mylar, which is kind of like a aluminum type <clears throat> material, and there's also cryolite, which is kind of like uh, the stuff in your air conditioning vent, the squishy blue stuff, and um, also things like aero aerogel beads or aerogel blankets, which are and just different types of insulation systems that they've created and we use those to test um, heat flow and we boil off liquid nitrogen and we try to prevent as much heat as we can from getting through the insulation system. All right, thanks. Yep. Well, we appreciate all your questions today and uh, we are running a little bit behind wow. and uh, once again though we appreciate your professional behavior and we'd like to continue that. Uh, behavior uh, throughout the remainder of the program, which will uh, be concluded by the Langley Research Center. So Langley, take it away.